That's right, and we want to welcome uh, Dr. Michael Brennan. He's the Chief Hurricane Specialist at the National Hurricane Center. So, Dr. Brennan, I just showed the computer models, and although, of course, we can't focus too much on any slight shifts in those models, we've been seeing them change uh, with every run here the past few days, and at times it can be a little misleading or confusing. Uh, can you explain a little bit to South Floridians, to our viewers, as to what this trend a little bit to the west could possibly mean in terms of the eventual track of Hurricane Irma? Yeah, I mean, there's still uncertainty as to where this, the timing and the exact location of this northward turn is going to occur. So, you know, yesterday we saw some models that had the turn occurring sooner along the east coast of Florida, and now we're seeing some models that are a little farther to the left. We expect those models to continue shifting around a little bit. You know, the, 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 the total area in which they're shifting is beginning to decrease now, though, because we're getting closer in time. So, so the area in play now appears to be about the width of the Florida Peninsula itself. Um, the, regardless of where the center makes landfall, uh, we're going to see a lot of hazards from Irma. Irma's a powerful storm. It's a very large wind field. There's going to be a lot of rain, a lot of storm surge over a big area. So we really need everybody in South Florida who's under that hurricane warning to prepare as if they're going to get the core of that major hurricane and those winds because we can't tell. Even within a few hours, it's, it's difficult to tell exactly where landfall is going to occur because these major hurricanes like to wobble around even though we draw a nice smooth track and you can have a wobble 10 or 15 miles one way or another. They can make a big difference in where the eye goes at that precise time of landfall. Those hazards are going to extend over a, a pretty big area. You could have hurricane force winds on both coasts if the storm comes up the middle of the peninsula. Yeah, we have been stressing to viewers how you want to avoid just uh, focusing on the center of the forecast cone because the tropical right. storm force and hurricane force winds extend well out from the center, and this is such a massive hurricane. Uh, we want to talk about the storm surge, and the, the highest threat seems to be across Miami-Dade County, but really up and down the coast of South Florida, and that's likely going to be extended for much of the state of Florida, really, right? Right, yeah, Irma's got a large circulation, so as on our current forecast track, if it's moving along sort of like this, out ahead of this, the center, there's going to be this large area of south, strong southeasterly winds that's going to blow water from the Atlantic up onto the coast here. So that's why we have that storm surge warning in place for the Broward County coastline, the Miami-Dade County coastline. And in particular, these areas along the Miami River and Biscayne Bay are very, very sensitive to storm surge. You can see how far inland the storm surge warning goes. That means we can see that storm surge flooding move quite a ways inland uh, as, as opposed to right along the Broward County coast where it's sort of more confined to the immediate coast. Line. We're also very concerned about the Florida Keys. Part of the Keys could see the uh, storm surge flooding from the southeasterly winds ahead of the circulation center. And then as the hurricane goes by, the northwesterly winds can create storm surge on the Gulf side of the Keys. So there could be two separate rounds of surge in the Keys. And again, all those areas are under a storm surge warning, which means there's the expected to see life threatening inundation from storm surge in the next 36 hours. It is forecast to be a long duration event. So in addition to the storm surge, can you talk more about what folks can expect with these very dangerous and destructive hurricane force winds that we are likely going to be seeing from Irma? Yeah, Irma is only going to be moving about, you know, seven or eight miles per hour. So what we're expecting is to see the tropical storm force winds first start along the Keys during the day on Saturday and then by Saturday evening through the rest of South Florida. And then Irma is only going to move very slowly. So near the core of Irma and along the coast, you could see a period of nine or ten hours, perhaps, of sustained hurricane force winds. It can cause a lot of damage. We're going to see tropical storm conditions for probably more than 24 hours. So it's going to be uh, the conditions are going to start to deteriorate very quickly as we go through the day Saturday. You're going to want to have your plans and your evacuation done by the end of Friday uh, and uh, be where you're going to be to ride out the storm by tonight or early tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for your insight and of course all the information that you've been providing us to help keep us informed and prepare Dr. Michael Brennan of the National Hurricane Center. We appreciate your hard work and all the meteorologists at NHC as well.